All right, we're going to get into a little something here that you've been wanting to get off your chest for a while, and I don't blame you. Yeah, there's something going on in the country. Yep, something big going on in this country. Something going on with the airlines. Yep. And if you're like me, you know, after the last two years, you want to get out, you want to move around. Mm -hmm. It's called revenge traveling. Yeah, stretch those you legs. Know, we've been held down for so long. We've been told not to leave the house. Um... But airlines, man, what's going on with the airlines? Uh, the other the other day, I had to run up to Minnesota, had a nice trip planned out. Was gonna fly Delta, first time ever, never flown Delta, mm -hmm. um, and I had to fly Delta just because flights from DFW up north that far are very limited. Southwest doesn't really have any non-directs. Uh, American Airlines does, but now that gas is so high. Their prices are outrageous. Oh my goodness. Airline air, airfare now is through the roof. And um, so I had to go with Delta. I found a, you know, we went with Delta. I was going to take my son with me. We're making a weekend with, uh, out of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had a little small job to, to knock out on that Friday morning. Well, Thursday, we were flying out at 10 a.m. was our flight. Um, and then Wednesday, so Wednesday, going into Wednesday evening, I got a notification from Delta saying that they, I checked weather, there was, there was no weather across the country, and I think that this flight is just a dedicated service line from the Twin Cities down to DFW. Like, this plane is not coming in from LaGuardia, New York, or Florida and then making a connecting flight to Dallas. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is a dedicated nonstop line between this this plane only goes north and south. Yeah. So and I cause they allow you to track where the plane was before, you mm -hmm. know, like yeah. what's going on. It'll show a map of where it is. So I looked at it and they showed the map. It was parked up at Minneapolis Minneapolis Airport. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, everything looks good. DFW weather's clear for the next several days. Minnesota weather's clear for the next several days. So it can't be weather. Um, in the evening, I get a little notification and said, okay, your flight was delayed about an hour and a half. I'm like, oh, already, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. And um, I'm, like, go. I'm like, okay, I scheduled it. You know, we're leaving at 10 a.m. It's central. It's still the central time zone. We're getting there at, uh, you know, just before one o'clock. Mm -hmm. So now it's delayed an hour and a half. We still got enough time to get there, have, you know, go hit the pool or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in the middle of the night, we're sleeping. I wake up the next morning, you know, getting ready to finish packing. We're going to be out the door. I check my phone. Flight is canceled. Just flat out canceled. And, um... So then I start panicking. I'm like, oh, man. And then they rebook me. They they rebooked me. The first rebook was at 5.30 a.m. Le like, I have to be... They're taking off at 5.30 a.m. That means I have to wake up at 4 in the morning with my 6-year-old kid and get to the airport and get in line. Maybe at 3.45 in the morning I have to get up because you got to yeah. get there, you know, an hour. Early, they yeah. want you to get there early and then they board at 30 minutes before the plane takes off. So super early. They're going to, they want me to get on that flight. It was going to fly to ATL Atlanta for like a 45 minute layover there. And then it was going to fly to Minneapolis. So six hours, six hours for this travel trip. Okay, wait, wait. Where was it gonna from? Where you were? DFW to ATL. Yeah. We stay. We stay grounded for like fifty minutes. Okay. Get back on the flight, then fly to finally our final destination. But all together, yeah, it was gonna be like five hours or so. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, no, this is ridiculous. And then I rebooked myself on the same exact flight. Non, uh, non, you know, direct flight mm -hmm. on the next morning. I, 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 thankfully, I didn't hesitate and wait for them to try to call me back because I called their customer service line. Yeah, and they said there's an hour and a half wait, and then they'll, they'll call me back. Thank God they had that callback service where yeah. you don't have to stay on the line. Yeah. So I, I rebooked myself on the on the same flight for 10 a.m. Get there before one. Blah blah blah. And I was like, 
all right, that's fine. And then they separated our seats. They had me sitting at the front of the plane. They had my son sitting in the back of the plane. You understand that this is your kid. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, they, you know, they, they knew that at the gate and they put us together. Okay. So all that got yeah, okay. fixed. Long story short, everything got fixed. It was a huge headache. It was a panic in the beginning. But this is something that's been going on for the last couple of years now. And I got some statistics for you um, that I looked up. I'm not just spitting off the top here. Since Memorial Day, there's been 200,000 delayed flights since Memorial Day mm -hmm. this year. Yes. 200,000. Yeah. There's been 24,000 canceled flights. 24,000 canceled flights. This has impacted 2.4 million passengers. It's almost the size of Houston. So since Memorial Day, this must this this much inter interruption disruption in airlines across the country right okay and since 2019 the cost of airfare is up 45 percent since 2019 there's been 25 percent less flights so there's 25 percent less fleet out there less scheduled flights 45 percent more for the cost and since the pandemic when the the early months of the pandemic, the airlines lost ninety six percent of their business. Of course, yeah. people stopped yeah. flying. You know, there was a travel ban going on. Um, Congress bailed the airlines out. They gave them fifty billion dollars. Did you know that? Yeah, they they gave them fifty billion dollars. But did you know the 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 big mistake that the airlines did before that they were before that they got that subsidy? Mm -hmm. They offered, this is where, this is where a lot of people aren't taking into account. And I learned this doing some research. The airlines offered early retirement yeah, I heard to that. thousands upon thousands of employees that were ready for, that were yeah. eligible for eligible. retirement within the next five to six years or whatever. So... And when we're talking from pilots to grounds crew to, you know, flight attendants yeah. to all these people, over 3,000 of those people who took early retirement were pilots, mm -hmm. people who know how to fly planes, very technical job. Yeah. You can't just, this. there's no six week training for learning to become a pilot, right? You don't just go and get a cert. You don't get a certificate. <laughs> It's not like forklift it's not certificate. Like Google certificates. No, <laughs> that you can. We're learn. talking about yeah. pilots. You got to yeah. have certain amount of hours yeah. of flying experience to become a commercial airline pilot. Pilot, yeah. and so that's a big mistake that no one's talking about. That the airlines offered early retirement to most a lot of their pilots who could have stayed in a training role. Yeah, who could have stayed to help. Uh, mentor younger pilots coming in mm -hmm. they could have been kept in some type of capacity uh you know and just because the airlines wanted to save money and then not only that they got a 50 billion dollar bailout so now there's a huge scramble to find more pilots and how do you just you can't it's like you know i would say no, i would say yeah. to become a good pilot is like uh, you know it's like a pregnancy thing it mm -hmm. takes at least nine months i would say mm -hmm. minimum i don't feel comfortable getting in a plane with somebody with that you know just yeah, started minimum experience it's november yeah. i'm taking a flight in november and they just started learning how to fly in february mm -hmm. how do you feel about that would you get on a plane like that? No, but there are many reasons why I wouldn't get on a plane, but definitely. 48 million people were expected to fly this 4th of July weekend, okay? Not only all these, so we got the, the price of fuels up now, so airfare's up. We had that issue that I just explained with about early retirement for the mm -hmm. pilots. So there's a pilot, pilot shortage right now. Not only is there a pilot shortage, there's a shortage for flight attendants. There's a shortage for grounds crew. All the people that work at the airport, right? Weren't, weren't Delta pilots on strike? That was my next point. Yeah. Delta pilots are now on a little... I don't know if the whole nation of pilots is on strike, but I saw somewhere a number, 1,200 pilots were striking Yeah. for more pay and because they're overscheduled. So it's like, it's a big... I think... It's a big mess. 
and and you guys <laughs> and, and i know there's people out there that want to take trips who've, who've been delayed i i travel a lot for work so a lot of my yeah. travel is during the week like yeah. on a tuesday yeah or monday and uh a lot of times don't those don't get messed with mm -hmm. It's the leisure travel, the weekend trips. Once it gets to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, those start getting... Well, especially like this weekend, what was it, like 400 flights have been canceled? This weekend, canceled? The, the numbers so far this weekend, over 600 flights have been canceled. Yeah. Uh, I think it was somewhere around 2,000 were delayed. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. You know... Well, another big factor is COVID is still out there lingering, and it gives people a huge out. Mm -hmm. You just call in and say you got sick, or you call in and say you're quarantined, or you were uh, you were next to somebody who had it that sneezed, and now you have to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you got to, you know, take a break. And a lot of people are leaning on that excuse for whatever reason, whether you think it's right or wrong, whatever. <clears throat> but it's a messing up the industry tremendously. Yeah, there's, <clears throat> there's no, um, I don't know, I mean, who do you, there's no one fault, you know, I would Yeah, think. it's a lot of, it's a lot of things. COVID is definitely, yeah. you know, it's the leading factor of why all of this is just falling apart, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, um, boy, there's going to be a huge issue, you know, within the next decade with this pilot issue if, if mm -hmm. more and more people aren't signing up to learn how to be pilots, you that's know? True. Yeah. So, so that's going to be an issue, and um, we'll see what happens. Who is it? Department of uh, Transportation guy Pete Buda judge. Mm -hmm. Do better. Well, you, you know, know this is like this is yeah. what we've been we're going towards. Everything's yeah. going to be controlled by you know artificial intelligence. The robot is going to be flying a plane from now on because humans they're no longer reliable. You know, we that can't train them as you know. fast. We can't train them as fast. They're, you know, we're susceptible to diseases, mm -hmm. obviously now. Um, and then the greed is going to continue to get out of control to where people don't want to pay pilots six figures now anymore, right? Because yeah. we can just have a robot in there and we'll just pay the maintenance guy 30 bucks an hour to continue fixing and uh, maintaining that robot that's flying the plane you know the robot doesn't have to take vacation the that's robot true. doesn't need a 401k you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. the robot doesn't have to stay home because his kid is sick and has to stay out of daycare well if it's an artificial intelligence i mean maybe they're they're like you know they're like I am artificially intelligent. I deserve a day off. Yeah. You know, you know, and that's unfortunate yeah. because we have more than enough people. Yeah. There's there's more than enough people in this world to be trained to have a um, fulfilling career, yeah. to have a life. But a lot of things are going to be automated. Mm -hmm. You know, we're moving towards automated Ubers, taxi drivers, automation in your fast food places. They're replacing low low skilled labor mm -hmm. with robots now they want to do that they've been doing that for a long time in general assembly facilities do you think that's a good idea what like replace like replacing that do i no i don't think it's a good idea not for the human civilization because yeah. you know but you know it's it's a lot of things that is going on in society that also causes the young people to not want to work anymore you know that we got phones now we're entertained you know whenever we want to be entertained we can be entertained yeah. with our phones and this and that our attention spans are nothing now mm -hmm. you know with tiktok showing you a new video every four seconds six seconds i know if the video says wait to the end i was like i'm not waiting stories yeah. social media you're never going to find a young person that will sit down and read a manual on how to fly a plane or how to put together an engine part or how to do this or how to, technical stuff is what i'm talking about well, I mean, if they were the skilled labor skilled labor yeah. you know we could find somebody to swing a hammer we, yeah. can, we can find somebody to dig a hole we can find somebody to put fries in a bag right but it's not fulfilling work mm -hmm. and a lot more people want fulfilling work they want to be fulfilled. Right, and it's not too hard to ask. 
it's not too hard to ask yeah. but um i don't feel like i do too much fulfilling work yeah i get paid decent amount of money to do what i gotta do and that's what i do you know well it helps keep the lifestyle that you're accustomed to exactly you know and so that is what makes it worth going in doing something that eh, I, I i can do this as opposed to i can't wait to do this so that's know? my airlines rant yeah. I just wanted to bring some statistics, real world statistics. The airlines are not doing too good. And uh don't beat up the customer service reps too much. It's not yeah. it's not their problem. It's all the executives at the top who are the getting lower people basically they just have to deal with the up yeah, front, the people up front. The lower folks yeah. gotta you know, the call center people, the people who are and you know I got an email um just the other day from Delta saying we apologize for canceling your flight. I think they're giving me like a hundred or two hundred dollar, not cash, credit, or something. credit to use again yeah. towards another airfare. I'm like, because you, you've had flights canceled on you because there weren't enough people to get on that plane. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that sucks also. And I get it that it'll cost them more money to fly the plane, but I mean, like, oh, I remember there were. I remember. <laughs> uh maybe five years ago or four years ago getting on a plane and it was just me and maybe 13 14 other people in this huge plane i bet you that was a fun flight. on southwest <laughs> you could i could lay out i could spread out do whatever and they took off took us to our destination goodbye have a nice day mm -hmm. yeah not anymore they're no. gonna make sure that those flights are full and not only they're gonna make sure those flights are full the standby line is gonna be 15 20 deep mm -hmm. so the people yeah. who are waiting to get on the plane too mm -hmm. yeah so i don't know Just especially with the busy travel weekends i mean you already know what's gonna i mean i, I don't know fourth of july labor day weekend all that uh, stuff i'm so all glad i'm stuff. not flying right now i'm my next flight is this thursday evening to mm -hmm. orlando oh i had a couple just a couple brief flight tips if you're flying here's a tip if you're flying take the very first flight that morning mm -hmm. as early as you can get out i know you don't want to wake up early you know you it's your vacation you want to Take your time, get to the airport, have a nice cocktail, have a drink or whatever. Get to the airport, get on the first flight, get out. Because the first flight rarely gets canceled. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're flying the first flight, non-direct, get non-direct too. That's another thing. I didn't want to take a connecting flight because you never know what... I could be... I'd rather be stuck at home. Right. Or stuck at my destination trying to get home. But not like go to another city and try to find a connecting flight to another city. Yeah, I could be stuck in some other city and not know anybody there. You know what I'm saying? So get on that first flight, pack light. Try not to, try not to check a bag. Yeah, uh, you get to bring one personal item, which is a book bag, and a smaller suitcase, the hard shell. Mm -hmm. You could bring a small suitcase. And they'll let you put it up and stuff like that. So travel light, get on that first non-direct flight. Those are my tips. Okay.